Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Rabbit Law Miles Australia. Um, today um, we're going to have a quick unboxing video. I'll just show you uh, the Ecovax G1 Goat. Um, so we finally got a, uh, a tester uh, to have a look at so we can start testing the robot. Um, we've got it here on the table. I have not opened it myself yet, so everything's going to be a surprise to me as well. Uh, we don't know a lot about these robots uh, at the moment. There's a few details and specifications that we're aware of. Uh, but until we test it all, we won't really know exactly, uh, exactly you know, how those specifications really work in the, in the real world. Um, but this robot is essentially a wireless ro robotic lawnmower um, that does not require uh, you know, GPS uh, RTK receptions to actually mow your lawn. So we'll unbox it and we'll see what's in the box and give you some quick details about what I, what I know so far. Um, and then hopefully in future videos we'll show you some testing and exactly how, how it actually works in the real world. So, very first thing about it uh, is that this box is heavy. Uh, this box is around about 30 kilos, it's about 30.5 kilos or something like that. Um, it's not all just the robot, and we'll get into that in a second, but the box itself, very, very heavy. Uh, right on top is a cardboard um, quick start guide. Um, it actually is a significant, significant guide. You can actually put that up against the wall uh, of your house or something while you're actually setting it up. So that's actually really quite a good thing to tell you. Uh, but it gives you your, you know, your app codes and that, or your 2D matrix to uh, to download the app and all that sort of stuff. And a quick guide on where to put the base station or where not to put the base station. As always, our traffic here is uh, deciding to uh, be as loud as possible. Okay, so everything inside the box at the moment, really well packed, really dense black foam uh, around everything. Um, packaged really, really well from what we can see at this point in time. Um, the, very, the biggest thing in the top there is actually the base station and it's upside down in here. And this is one of the reasons why the box is so heavy. Now, this is the base station or the actual the top of the base station. There's obviously a base that goes underneath that. Um, this base station, oh God, that's probably around about five kilos. They're about four or five kilos. It's quite heavy. Um, there's a lot of smarts inside the actual base station itself. Um, even to the point that, so it's got uh, identification marks here for it to actually, so, so it can actually uh, guide itself back onto the dock. It's also got brushes here that actually clean the cameras and things that are actually on the, on the robot every time it comes home uh, to the base station. So put that to the side there. The next is a, essentially just an accessories box, and it actually says it right on the front there, it says accessories box. Um, in this box here, we'll go through in a little, we'll go through, go through it now as we go. Um, open that up. So, so again, it's really quite well packaged. Again, there's no issues about how it's, how it's being packaged. Uh, there's a little indication on the front there that actually tells you what's actually in here, uh, which is a power supply, a power cord, spare nine spare blades, uh, some screws, which is probably for the base station, some ground screws to screw the base station down to the ground, uh, a screwdriver and an Allen key. So that comes with, comes with the tools that you need to actually do the job. So there's your ground screws, fairly standard, uh, very, very, very similar to the works. Uh, Landroid ground screws, those ones, for, for screwing the uh, base station down to the ground. The power supply is only quite a very small power supply. Obviously, it doesn't have an Australian plug on it because this is only a sample. Um, it's a two and a half amp hour, uh, 21 volt. So obviously, it's a 21 volt uh, battery in the, or a 20 volt battery in the, in the robot. Um, and it's, sorry, it's a three, it's three amp, sorry. So it's a three amp charge rate uh, at, at 21 volts. Uh, and the IP rating of this is not on there, but it does look quite good. Um, I suggest that would be probably at least 56 and probably 67 or something, but it doesn't look like it's a 42 or anything like that. So no, the IP rating's not, not this one there, but I think that looks like it's pretty sealed. So I'd say that'd be okay out in the, out in the yard. Without too much trouble, um, and the plug, the power plug that goes on that, um, yeah, it's just a very small power plug, quite similar to, uh, probably similar to the Seiko units or the the, 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 Victor, the Victor robots. Um, little Allen key, about five mil thereabouts. Um, I'd say for the ground screws, um, that'll be our blades. Um, nine blades in a very small packet there. Let's have a quick look at these blades because I have heard. On a couple of reviews there that the blades might be very very thin but let's just have a look here whether those review people really had any experience with robot mowers is uh not determined no they're perfectly fine they're just they're very very close again they're actually very very close to the victor blades in fact i think there's a set of victor blades right here mm. 
So physically the same size as the as the Victor blades, but the hole the hole in the center of the blade is much larger. So so, that's, so these the standard blades uh, that you can buy online uh, may or may not fit these. But look, the thickness of that blade is perfectly fine. It's um, just as thick as any other blade, probably about the same thickness as a Works Landroid blade. So there's no issues there whatsoever. They certainly are sharp, so be very careful when you're handling them. Try not to bleed. Okay, so that is the blades. So that was one of the questions in my own mind, is to see, uh, to see what the blades are like. Um, the power cord, power extension cord, that's a reasonable length like they usually are. So at least it looks like it's an extension, which it is. Yes, so you, you, you can use this lead optionally. So if, if you are right next to the power point, uh, then you can just plug the, uh, the, power, the power cord straight into the back of the base station. If you need the extra length, then you can install this, uh, this cable, which we'll measure it again another day, but I would be guessing that's about eight meters long. Could be, could be as long as 10 meters long. Okay. And then we've got this box here, which opens somehow, here we go, we open up the ends there, and then it rolls open, doesn't it? There we go, okay. So this is where the Ecovac GOAT system changes from, from other robots, basically. So I'll take both of these. So these are actually your reference station, you know, essentially your reference stations that you're putting in your yard locally. So you put them around your yard, um, it only comes with two in the box when you first buy these, um, but they, they install these locally around the, around the actual uh, perimeter of your property. Um, and from what we understand at the moment, the robot needs to be able to see two of these at, at, all, at all times, basically. Um, so if you do just have a simple square or an L-shaped an L-shaped lawn, uh, then the two of these will do perfectly fine. Uh, if you've got a U-shaped lawn, you'll need more. In fact, we'll have a, just a quick chat about this now. I'll throw up a picture on the screen here. Just gives the recommendations on how many, on how many uh, of these repeater stations you, know, you should actually use uh, in your yard, uh, and you can see on the drawing there that, like I said, if it's if you don't have many obstacles, there's few, few obstacles in your yard, and it's square or L-shaped, then you can get away with two of these. Um, if you've got a lot of obstacles in your yard, you're generally going to need three, um, and if you've got a U-shaped yard, um, you may need four, or maybe even five. Uh, depending on how on how difficult it is for the robot to be able to uh, to, to see these um, these repeater stations, so I don't know this for certain, but it's certainly looking at that drawing, um, it does appear as though the the um, the requirement is that the robot probably needs to be able to have a direct line of sight with two of these at all times. Um, so they're the actual repeaters themselves, and then in this other side here is the actual ground spikes spikes for them. Okay, so these are the ground spikes for them. So they've got quite a significant screw in the bottom there and you screw those down into the ground and then these just click down into like such and they just click down like that and uh, so that basically they stand up in your ground. In your, in your ground. So they are quite white. <laughs> um, I know there's a lot of concerns out there about the colour of them. I believe there is already people out there that are actually creating wraps and stickers for these to actually to hide them into your into your yard, so you don't have to worry about don't have to worry about the, uh, the colour of them. So you can make them different colours and camouflage and things like that. So I'm sure we'll end up doing the same thing here in Australia. Um, but that's the story with those guys there. So you get two with the robot. Uh, so you get two of these two of these ground spikes. Holding them in. Okay, so that's everything in there. Now I do believe box to the side. Okay, so I do believe by the weight of these, these already have batteries fitted. Um, it looks like there's a battery symbol there. Oh yeah, they just unscrew. Look at that simpleness. So yes, the batteries are fitted in there already. Uh, and looks like what they've done, they've actually put a piece of foam in here to stop the batteries from actually being connected. So when you actually operate these, you'll just take that piece of foam out and screw it back together again, and they should all work. And I believe they take three batteries, so three D-sized batteries. They provide them with a decent, for what appears to be a decent alkaline battery. And, and yes, there's three. So they take three D-sized uh, batteries. And I honestly have little to no idea of how long those batteries will actually last. <laughs> I suspect it would be quite a while, but I just don't know how long the batteries last. Uh, that's uh, 
we'll do some more research and time will tell uh, exactly how that works out. Okay, so the next thing out of here appears to be the robot. So this, again, this is that really, really dense black foam that's in there. So these things are really packaged really, really well. Okay, looks like the robot's the next thing to come out of here. The robot, I believe, weighs 13 kilos. So it's not ridiculously heavy, it's not too bad at all. And we'll just sit that there for a second and I'll just get that base station out. Get the base out of here. So I can put this box to the side as well. Okay. So that is the base station. The head comes down on the base station and I'm assuming, so there's a power cord on that side, which means there is a plug that we need to look at here. We might have to get into this another day, it's okay. Um, there's a power cord coming out the side there, then there's a plug coming out this bottom base here, so that obviously goes in and actually connects into the base there, because I assume, without getting too details, yeah, there's, a, there's guidance wires installed underneath the base station which assist it when it comes into docking, uh, which is fairly normal uh, for most for, for a lot of robots. Uh, some don't, don't require that and some do. Um, yeah, this just clicks on the top here like such. Get those out the side there like such. And then I believe the two screws that are in the, which we didn't see to tell you the truth. There are two screws. No, we did not see the two screws. They're not even the blades. I did say on the, uh, on the thing that there were screws in there, but I don't think they're actually required anymore, so it might be, uh, yeah, there's nowhere to put screws in the bottom of this anymore, so it just, it just clicks on. There are, there are no screws to screw the, screw the head on, uh, and then that's your base station like such. Again, around the back, yeah, hopefully you can see there, okay. I don't know why I'm having to stop. There we go, so much trouble getting that off. Yeah, and that just clicks in the back there. There's a plug in the back there. You click that in. High those wires into the side there, like such. And we'll click that back on again. Okay. And it just connects the wires in the base so that it's got some guidance to uh, to be able to dock itself. So look, it is very different, obviously, the uh, the base station design uh, from what we're typically used to with any any other robots. Uh, and the real reason for that is because of the way this robot has its guidance system. Um, I can see straight away the charging points on the front corner here. Uh, there we go. Top of the traffic here is always fantastic. So here goes the, uh, the sirens. Uh, so as it docks in here, you've got two rather large charge plates on the side that come in and, and touch on these uh, on these side plates here, which have actually got two stages of connection there. So that's actually quite uh, quite neat as well. There's no doesn't. There's no micro switches or anything on those on those panels to actually turn anything off when it actually comes in, so that's fine. Um, and yet, obviously, the, the robot just drives in and docks in. Now, obviously, the biggest difference with these guys is that these are all camera driven, and obviously, with this antenna as well, which we put that up there and screw that down, like such. Get the antenna. It's actually a very, very flexible antenna, so if it does go under anything, it looks like it's going to be perfectly okay up to around this height here, it'll actually just it'll go under. Um, anything lower than that, then it's actually gonna hit that antenna, but it's also gonna hit the camera here on the front as well. So, like I say, the biggest difference with these guys uh, is the fact that they have one, is they have this fisheye camera on the top here. So it sees 360 degrees around the robot um, for it to be able to look what it's doing. Now, I don't 100% understand exactly how the technology of this guy works, whether it's using LiDAR and things like that all the time. I really don't know until I do, do some more research uh, and understand how it actually works and test that so we can see how it's uh, exactly uh, what it actually does and doesn't do. So, but it's got the fisheye camera on the top there which sees 360 degrees and when, when, you don't, when you're not using the robot, you can put that cover over the top there which, uh, which just keeps it high, keeps it covered. Um, there's another camera in the front here, um, which I believe is about 170 degrees, I think it sees at the front of the robot, so really quite good, or uh, might, might be 150 degrees. Um, so it uses that front camera to identify everything in front of it when it's, when it's, when it's driving. Uh, any obstacles that are in front of it, it'll actually identify those obstacles. And from all reports, it, they really do work very, very well. Um, what else is in the front there? 
and as you can see, light sensors and a few bits and pieces like that. Um, so how they operate in the dark and things, I honestly don't know. So they think that you know, operating at night time. I believe these do operate at the night time. I, I don't know, and so we have to again until we actually get get out there and really test them. Um, it does have a decent decent stop button on the back there without any problems, and then under the cover there, you have yeah, an LCD display with a with a fairly normal simple um, um, keypad uh, with four arrows and an OK button in the middle. You know, play, operate, go home, turn off, and a back button. So very very easy. Uh, one thing worth really noting is that these guys are still on a mechanical mechanical blade height adjustment. Um, so there's obviously going to be no settings uh, in the robot to be able to change the height of the cut settings um, you know, from lawn to lawn. Uh, you'll have to set the cut settings manually and then that's, that's how it will be. Okay. The whole robot itself sort of does feel not bad at all. Like it's really, it really is a solid machine. There's no issues about that. Uh, it's got a really good hand on the back, which you can pick it up quite easily with. Um, probably shouldn't put your fingers on the cameras when you're picking it up. Um, there is a floating bump sensor on the bottom here, so that, that black section there actually does push it back and forward. Um, so if, it's, if it does physically bump into something, it's going it's to sense that and pick that up. Now I'll just wind this antenna down again. I'll turn it upside down. I'll have a look at what we've got here. So fairly large, 22 centimetre blade. It looks looks a bit large. No, it must be 22. So they say 22, so it must be 22. Um, 22 centimetre blade disc. Um, very very similar to, to, to a lot of others. Um, the disc itself is quite strong, so it's probably not going to not going to warp very easy. But that's a reasonably wide cutting uh, cutting platform on a robot this size. Um, there's some cooling um, on the front there, so obviously the, the, the board and the cameras and everything must be sitting in behind that, so there's a cooling plate there to help uh, dissipate the heat. Um, the wheels, the back wheels, they're fairly light duty as far as the construction of those back wheels, um, but they've certainly got plenty of traction. Um, the spacings of the treads here on these back wheels, probably not ideal for Australian grasses uh, with your buffaloes and kikus and things like that. Um, the spacing's probably a little bit too close. So they might actually sit up on top of the lawn a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be a particular problem for these guys. Um, the slope rating on these guys is 45%, so a little bit less than some robots, but again, these are really designed to be on fairly flat ground. Um, and I suspect that you know, if these are required to reverse up a slope uh, in any situation, then traction is probably, probably going to be an issue like, like most robots are. Uh, you're probably looking at something like 20% slope on the boundaries. We'll, be, we'll probably max this thing out. But again, haven't tested it, so we'll get into that and we'll get it tested. The front wheels, fairly small, um, very, very similar to a works Landroid wheel again, so strong enough shaft, not an issue there. Um, quick release, um, so they can actually just be quick pull, pulled out and replaced very easily without opening up the robot, which is great. Um, so they should be a fairly easy part to replace if they do break. Um, they, do, they do spin very, very freely, so they're actually a bearing they do actually, it looks like they actually are a bearing wheel as well, so that's actually quite good. Um, it spins fairly free that way, and obviously it comes up and down, so there'll be a sensor on these wheels that'll actually sense when they actually come down. So if both wheels come down, if the front's lifted off the ground, uh, then no doubt the robot will stop uh, and go back the other way. Um, quick change battery system on there, so you can actually get access to the battery there and actually pull that out. 5.2 amp hour battery, I believe, and again, if uh, as with per the... the uh, the charger there, it'll be a 20 volt battery, so it's a 5 cell uh, lithium uh, battery. Um, which should be quite plenty for what this what this guy needs to do. I'm not sure on the run time, but given the battery size, I'd suggest it'd be somewhere around the 2 hour mark uh, in that ballpark. It should go out and run per charge. Um, and then charging 5 amp hours, 3 amp hour charge, is probably going to be a, probably a good 2 hours uh, by the time the battery's fully charged uh, to get back up and running again. Um, yeah, it's quite there. So that um, that floating system under the front here, um, again, they've actually used a very similar system to the Works Landroid with the uh, with the rubber mounts under the under the bottom there. So they've proven to be very very reliable over time with the Works Landroid machine. So that should be absolutely fine. And um, there's a few clips and things on the uh, on the white cover on the top there. So it looks like that comes off pretty quick and easy. They look like a reasonably serviceable robot quite well. To tell the truth, they seem to be rather rather easy to get in and out of. Okay, oh, there's, my, there's my traffic again. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to sort of say about the, 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 this guy at the moment. Um, we're really keen to get out there and start testing it. Um, I'm going to test this thing actually in my own personal backyard where the, where the RTK robots do not work uh, because it's just too, it's too tight of an area. I've got too many buildings and trees around there, so it's a perfect, perfect spot to actually test this guy. Um, probably the biggest thing worth noting at this point in time, it looks like these guys are only a single area robot. So they don't do multiple areas at this point of time, but I would imagine that will absolutely change in the future you know, with firmware updates and things like that. So I don't think you'll be worried about you know, hardware changing to be able to, to be able to do multiple areas, um, but they definitely, uh, they definitely uh, will start updating firmware over time uh, that will allow these guys to do multiple areas and hopefully it's not too far away. Okay. Um, I, the, probably the one other thing we didn't just only really touched on at the beginning there is that every single time this robot comes home, these cameras at the front and the top there, it comes in and there's actually mechanical brushes in that actually come out and actually clean the cameras front and back every time the robot actually docks, uh, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I do hope that you know that that, that, that is actually a reliable system over time uh, and that it can keep everything nice and clean because obviously that's probably one of the biggest issues with a camera driven robot is the fact that the cameras and the lenses need to be very very clean. Um, I didn't touch on the capacity, this guy's a capacity of 1600 square meters. Now I would highly imagine and I, I was aware of but I can't think right now, there is a distance uh, from these beacons uh, to the robot, I'm not sure what that maximum distance is, I think it's around 30 meters or something like that, uh, it might be 50 but it, it's, a, it's a reasonable way but if you've got trying to do 1600 square meters with this robot then there's no doubt that you'll actually need quite a few of these um, i believe you can connect up to 10 of these to the robot so you can purchase these after, as a separate item after purchasing the robot cost i don't know exactly what these are going to be worth um, but if you've got a very large area then there's a very good chance you're going to have to buy more of these uh, to get it going cost of the robot itself again completely unconfirmed we don't really know but it's probably going to be in and around that three thousand dollar mark I'm hoping it's going to be less than $3,000, but I just don't know uh, when it, exactly what's going to happen there. Uh, you can sort of do the conversion. I think they're $14.99 euros, I think, uh, overseas. So you can do the conversion and usually add a couple hundred dollars more than what the conversion is, is generally what happens with robots here in Australia, given the shipping costs and everything else to getting here. So we usually are you know, a couple hundred dollars dearer than the conversion uh, from, from Euro or UK or wherever you, wherever you Google these guys. Rain sensor on the back as well, so typical to most robots, if it does rain, it can go home. I think that's about it, guys. Um, like always, if you've got any questions on this robot or any robot that's sold in Australia or not sold in Australia, uh, please just send us an email at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can find a lot of information on our website on all the brands that we sell and the upcoming brands uh, on so www.robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, and you can find a lot of small snippets of information that we uh, put out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those things. Uh, just search for Robot Law Miles Australia on those platforms. Thanks for watching.